What is happening guys? Welcome back. So we're finally getting on with some content that some of you guys have been absolutely crying out for. As you can see, the polo has been moved out of the way and we've got the T5 on the lift. Thankfully it fits pretty much the way that I'd measured it out and it's pretty stable on the lift. Nice little bit of room at the back to still get round it. Um, I had it all the way up in the air yesterday. It felt a bit sketch, but it went up and so far, <laughs> touch wood, it's not falling off. So, something that we need to sort out on the T5, which I think I mentioned in a previous video, which may have been on the Polo, was that we've got the most horrendous oil leak. And we can't work out where it's coming from. So, we've had a few people, uh, a few friends and whatever, we've had on a few different lifts and we've tried to work out where it's coming from, but we just can't. So, that little patch of oil down there, that was from it being parked for probably 20 minutes. Um, yeah. It's down the back of the engine. I've got a funny feeling it's something to do with the oil feed to the turbo because it leaks constantly. It's not like it leaks for a bit and then it stops. I think it's something that's under pressure. I might be wrong, might not, might be wrong. Never know what I'm talking about. Anyway, let's get it up in the air and I'll try and show you up from underneath the oil because you can't really see a lot from the top and then we'll start taking bits off and see if we can see where it's coming from. There she is, all the way up. Lift is maxed out to the very top. We've got plenty of room at the top, so my calculations of how much to raise the roof of the building by works out quite well. It feels a bit dodgy being under it. I don't know whether that's just because of the size and the weight of it or what, but we've been under it a bit yesterday and it felt okay. So let's show you what it's like under it because it's not good. So subframe, caked in oil. Um, this here as well, which I think will be something coming out of the gearbox, maybe from one of the seals. Drive shafts are both okay. This side, oil all over it here. This one, we got a puncture hole just there in that um, CV boot. So, yeah, we've got a bit of grease and oil and dirt, whatever, about. But you can see here, this is all wet. You can see that pipe up there. I think that's for the steering. You've got the steering rack there, it's absolutely caked. Front of the engine isn't too bad. Front of the engine doesn't actually seem horrendous. There's a bit of oil up the top, but I have a funny feeling that might have been from, potentially from the intercooler, because we had to change the intercooler on it, because that had burst, which was why it had no power. Um, and then around the back, obviously everything underneath is just caked. Exhaust is caked in oil, heater exhaust caked in oil. Everything is just layered up in oil. And then we've got a look up in here. This is all caked in oil. And if you get right up in there, that's all caked in oil as well. So this is going to be one extremely messy job. And I'm not really sure where this oil leak is going to be coming from. But initial thoughts were I was just going to pull the engine out and just have a look and see if we can see it on the bench. But now what I'm thinking, we'll go up top, start taking things off like airbox, things like that. Um, so we can see a bit from the top then we'll probably come under and take the exhaust off, or at least this front section of the exhaust off the back of the turbo um, to give us a bit more access. Because if we move that, we should be able to get up by the back of the block and try and work out where it's coming from. Like under here, you look at, look at all this. This is absolutely caked in oil. So yeah, who knows? Let's, as we do, just start taking bits off and hope it all works out. But before we get on with taking anything off the van, I've had a lot of messages from people asking me how they can help support the channel. The best way you can help support the channel is like, subscribe, share. At the moment, nearly 60% of the people watching the channel are not subscribed to the channel. I've not said it yet, but it's been a bit of a goal in my head. Let's see if we can hit 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That would be, yeah, absolutely amazing. It's unbelievable to think there's 100,000 of you already, but 200,000. Let's set ourselves a little goal for the end of the year. Another way that you can do it is merch. Obviously, we do a line of clothing. I've done a bit of a drop recently. We don't order massive amounts in um, for each drop because I want to focus on a quality garment, not a cheap garment in mass, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, head over to dacind.com. There's the anti-rusty resto t-shirt is on pre-order. That'll be with me in a few weeks, but the other stuff that's on there is in stock and ready to go. So yeah. If you want to help support the channel, head over, grab yourself some merch, get yourself a nice t-shirt ready for the nice weather that's on its way. Right, let's get on, get some stuff removed from the T5.
that wasn't actually as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Turbo is off um, and my lights died so I can't really show you properly. But up there, there are two holes. So on the block, you've got, oh, get me going in, those two there. So you've got a feed and a return. So those two holes marry up with those two holes on that. Now there is a hell of a lot of oil around the outside. It may have happened when we took it off, but I highly doubt it. And looking at the gasket that was on there, you see there's a hard line. Oh, if I can get it focused. You see there's a hard line around the top, but there's no hard line around the bottom. And the same on the back in that corner. There's no hard line. That, to me, would suggest that that has been the culprit and that has been what has been leaking. So hopefully, if we replace this here, which... Uh, Simon from Dub Dot Shop, as we've spoken about this this morning, what we thought it was, these I think are about 70 quid from TPS. So let's get one of them ordered and we'll be able to get it back on. Right, we're back, ready to get on. We've taken a trip over to TPS in Coventry. Massive shout out to Simon from Dub Dot Shop for ordering me the parts. Well, let me speak to TPS because I've not got to count myself and all of the parts we needed. We are now... 115 pounds lighter which bought us these parts yeah that little lot 115 pound so we've got this is the capped to turbo seal we've got these two here which are turbo to manifold seal we've got this one which is to the block which is the one that we think was the problem before which hopefully is going to solve our issues and then we've got some um, exhaust clamps to get the exhaust back on because a few of the bolts snapped um, and yeah we'll just replace them so we're not going to need any leaks it's now time to try and get this back together so let's throw a time lapse on get this belt back up and hopefully this is going to cure the issue we had Wow, I am filthy. Uh, right, I'd have probably not explained this as well as I should have done. So I'll try and go through now and show you what you have to do to get this off. You would, I think you'd really, really struggle doing this on the floor without a lift. So underneath, as I showed you up, we've taken the exhaust off back to the first silencer. So you've got all this room to get in. This is the turbo and everything that you need to get off. That flange bit up here, you got under these three screws, that top piece, that piece there, the gasket and a little donut inside are all floating. There's basically a little collar that comes down off this and the um, donut, basically as you put it in and clamp all this together, it crumps and grabs the down tube off the manifold. And then down here, you've got, if I can get it in, you've got that bolt up there. There's ooh, one bolt down here and then there's another one, a nut down here, sorry. And then there's a bolt, a, a um, spline bolt, M10 spline bolt up at the top to get it off. It really is literally six bolts to get the unit off after you've got the exhaust off. You've got the vacuum line there off the actuator to get off as well. Um, like I say, it isn't a horrendous job. I just really think you struggle doing this on the floor without a lift. But we've managed to get that turbo back on um, with all the new gaskets and everything and I've, I did the ones up to the block first where it was leaking before. We did those up first, made sure all three of those were nice and tight. And we've then done um, the three up to the manifold at the top, making sure everything's in the correct place, which I'm pretty happy it is. So now we can get the cap back on, get the exhaust back on, and then we put all the airbox and everything back in. And hopefully that's gonna be it fixed, hopefully. So everything's buttoned up, back together, exhaust is on, as you can hear. We've got it up on the lamp ramp running. It's been running for about five minutes. Tem oil's getting up to temperature to get warm. It will never get hot enough as the diesel sat on the lift, as we learned with the first C5 we did on the channel. So, should we have a quick look, see if it's dry where it was wet before? Hopefully it is. So, under here, uh, under there, you can see the cap 
passed him behind the actuator and the heat shielding below is where it was witnessing oil before and it looked right to me. So fingers crossed, it stays that way and that's that job hopefully ticked off the list. Good morning, right so we got the van put all back together yesterday um, and we then got it up in the air, ran it up, well cleaned everywhere off when it was apart, ran it up, put it on the lift and there was oil coming out from somewhere again. So I cleaned everywhere down again last night, doused it in brake cleaner, try and get everything off, let it run off. We then been back in this morning, cleaned that, brake cleaned it and then wiped it all over again. And we've just had the van running for 10 minutes and I think, I think it's fixed. So looking inside there, there's that um, heat shield there, which has got some sand ending on the back of it, which is a bit soaked in oil, which is what I think the oil was leaking from the other day, because it's just saturating oil. There was that much under there that it was saturated in oil. Um, but yeah, I think that is fixed, which is really nice. We've not got a leaky van anymore, and it was actually not too bad a fix and I'll be able to drive it and leave it on people's drives now without the worry <laughs> of it leaving a mark. So hopefully another issue on the van is sorted out meaning that we can yeah hopefully hit the road this summer once the interior is built which is on the list. Materials are ordered, um, CNC machine is primed and yeah hopefully in the next week or two we're going to be getting on with building the interior for the van because we're supposed to be going away in, in about four weeks. Um, so yeah, I'm glad we've got that part of the engine sorted out. She runs okay. Um, yeah, it's just the interior now. So, hope you've enjoyed this one then guys. Until next time, enjoy. <laughs>